Natasha Heff, age 35, graduated from Northeast High School. Heff lived with her six-year-old son, Carvel Stevens, in their home at 7312 Indiana Avenue in Kansas City, Missouri. Two other children live in the home but will remain unnamed due to privacy reasons. Prince Carvel Stevens, loved the outdoors and going to the park. He absolutely adored playing in the snow. Heff struggled for many years with drug addiction and depression. On Tuesday, February 15, Heff called 911 claiming that the devil was trying to attack her. Police were immediately dispatched to the residence to do a welfare check. When police approached the home, they found blood on the front steps, and a woman singing inside the house. There was blood and hair on the front door. When police knocked on the door, Hef refused to answer, and she began singing even louder. One officer peered through a window and noticed what appeared to be the severed head of a young child near the front door entrance. Since it was reported that there may be other children inside the home, police forced entry and discovered a disturbing scene. Hef was covered in blood, and further into the home, near the entrance of the kitchen they located the headless body of a young male child. Hef had apparent cuts and scratches on both hands, and a puncture wound on her right thigh. Hef was immediately arrested, and officers called in the Kansas City, Missouri crime scene unit to take over. Hef was transported to police headquarters. She was offered food and water, and allowed access to the restroom. She was advised of her Miranda rights, which she affirmed and waived her rights, and agreed to speak with officers about the crime. Once the crime scene unit took over and began combing the crime scene they discovered a screwdriver, a knife, and a knife handle all covered in blood and tissue. Another bloody knife was found in the basement. Near the bloody knife in the basement was the decapitated body of a dog. It was later determined that Heff's other two children were with an aunt and unharmed. Jackson County Prosecutor Jean Peters Baker told reporters, it's difficult to imagine the grief for this boy's family, the child's classmates, his friends, neighbors and the first responders who went to this crime scene. She continued, it takes our breath away. My office, as it always has, pledges to do everything in its power to bring justice in this young boy's murder. She went on to say, this child's death is a call for something more. Our community must heed the call. Law enforcement, prosecutors, public health officials, social service providers, all of our many partners must work together to address the violence. Strong collaborations are needed to lean into this difficult challenge, and better protect our community's most vulnerable population, our kids. Let's also focus, Kansas City, on the violence among us. It's a challenge we can no longer ignore. We cannot become complacent with 180 or 170 or even 150 homicides per year and hundreds more shot but not killed. We've seen the horror that can occur when we don't work together to help our community members avoid a future of violence. The Jackson County Medical Examiner ruled the manner of death to be a homicide. Court documents indicate Heff had former charges for drug possession. In 2012 she had convictions for possession of a controlled substance. In April of 2017 Heff was stopped after leaving a bar due to reckless driving. She denied having any alcohol, but showed signs of impairment. A field sobriety test was given, and she had an alcohol concentration well over the legal limit. She was arrested for operating while under the influence. In April of 2018 she was stopped for a minor traffic violation. The officer noticed a strong odor coming from the car. When officers searched the vehicle they found a baggie with drugs in it. She was charged again for possession in 2019. Mark Williams, uncle to Carvel, told reporters, when this happened, it shocked me, I was lost for words. I don't understand it. I've never met a lot of kids but his personality was so warm. Williams lives in East St. Louis, and says he would have taken the child if Hef would have just asked for help. He continued saying, 
I wish I could have done more. I wish I could have saved you. I just wish she would have picked up that phone, and called and asked for help. I would have enjoyed having him with no hesitation, because he was a loving child, adorable. It's unbelievable, unreal, it feels like a dream. A horrible dream that we need to wake up from, but this is reality, it really happened. Carvel's father is still in prison, and was told of his child's death through the Department of Corrections. When police interviewed Hef she admitted to killing her son in the bathtub then decapitating him. She also admitted he was her biological son. She denied having any type of mental illness. Tasha Hef is being held at the Jackson County Detention Center without bond. She is being charged with first-degree murder and armed criminal action. She was ordered to undergo a mental health evaluation, and appointed a public defender. The mental evaluation was submitted before the court on May 25, in 2022. Upon the evaluation, Judge Sarah Castle, found that Hef lacks the mental fitness to stand trial. She ordered that Hef be placed in the custody of the Missouri Department of Mental Health for treatment. She ordered Hef to be re-evaluated in six months to determine if she is fit to stand trial. I don't know what happened in this situation, but this is an opportunity to remind people that, yes, if people need help even if they aren't asking for it, it can't hurt to please reach out and try to get people help or at least try to reach out to someone to intervene, said KCPD Captain Leslie Foreman. Funeral services for Prince Carvel Stevens was held at St. Matthew Baptist Church in East St. Louis, Illinois on Saturday, March 5, in 2022. Jenny M. Perry, age 38, lived in her North Chicago home with her three children, six-year-old Damari and 20-year-old Jeremiah. The third child will remain unnamed due to privacy reasons. In 2014 the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services removed Damari from the home and placed him into foster care shortly after his birth. Perry's other children were also removed from the home and she was under investigation at the time. In 2017 all children were returned back to Perry by court order. In May of 2021 the Department of Children and Family Services opened another investigation into alleged abuse and neglect, but the children remained in the home, and no further actions were taken. On January 5, in 2022 Jenny Perry and her son Jeremiah reported to authorities that her six-year-old son, Damari, was missing. The mother and son told police that the child was last seen in Skokie, Illinois. They reported that he and his 16-year-old sister were driven to a party by a black female known as Monique and a black male known as Chaos. Monique was driving a black Nissan four-door sedan. The sister described the apartment building where the party took place. A three-story yellow building with an exposed stairway. The building was in or near Skokie. The sister says she had several drinks at the party, and dozed off. When she awoke a few hours later, her six-year-old brother and the black male by the name of Chaos was no longer at the party. She said sometime later Monique drove her back home. When a young child goes missing, a combined effort between police, the public and the family are often critical in bringing the child back home safely, and as quickly as possible. Police put out a statement saying, Damari may be in extreme danger, and we are asking anyone with information on Damari's whereabouts, or the true identity of Monique or Chaos to contact the North Police Department. Damari L. Perry, age 6, is described as a light-skinned black male, he's 4 foot tall, and weighs around 40 pounds. He has brown eyes and brown hair. The Federal Bureau of Investigations became involved in the missing child's case and led a multi-state investigation into Damari's disappearance. Within a couple of days investigators discovered the story the two gave contradicted the evidence in Skokie. Focus was quickly turned to the boy's home in North Chicago. A witness came forward, and led investigators to the body of six-year-old Damari. 
He was found in an alley in Gary, Indiana on Saturday, January 8, in 2022. He was found naked, wrapped in a plastic trash bag. Damari had bruises, and his body was partially frozen. The medical examiner ruled the death a homicide caused by hypothermia. And it was determined the body had post-mortem burns. Why would a person hurt a child, my child at that, Perry's father Dalvin Driver said. It's, been like a nightmare that ended yesterday when they told me my son wasn't coming home. As prosecutors considered the crime scene where Damari died, it became clear that this was a calculated plan against a small child, Lake County State's attorney Eric Reinhardt told reporters. Damari's final minutes warrant the sentencing enhancements that accompany such brutal and heinous circumstances. Jenny Perry was charged with first-degree murder, concealment of a homicide death, and obstructing justice. She was scheduled to appear in bond court in early February, however she did not appear due to being taken to the hospital on February 5 claiming she was feeling ill. She remained under heavy guard while in the hospital. She was released from the hospital on February 12, and taken back to the Lake County, Illinois jail. Jeremiah Perry was charged with aggravated battery causing great bodily harm to a child under 12, concealing a homicide death, and obstructing justice. Another child, a juvenile, was also taken into custody and taken to the Lake County's juvenile court. However due to the child's age the records are sealed. During a hearing it was revealed that on December 29 in 2021 Damari wet his pants, and the incident enraged his mother. He was beat, then put into a tub of cold water for an extended period of time. At some point Damari vomited, and became unresponsive. He eventually died from hypothermia, and nobody sought medical treatment for the child. His 20-year-old brother drove his body to Skokie where his body was later found. It also came out that after the family discovered the child was dead, they discussed different ways to dispose of his body, and ended up agreeing on taking him to Gary, Indiana where his body was later found by investigators. Prosecutors told the court how the child died on December 29 but his family did not report him missing until almost a week later. Jannie Perry's bond was set to $5 million. She would need to post $500,000 to be released. Jeremiah Perry was held in jail on a $3 million bond. Jeremiah was already on probation for unrelated charges. A grand jury found the case to be exceptionally brutal and heinous, and allowed the prosecutors to seek life sentences in the crime. A trial date has not been set yet. A GoFundMe campaign was created by Damari's father. All proceeds will help cover the child's burial costs. Tasha Heff abused drugs and had a history of depression. She began having delusions, and thinking Satan was out to get her. At some point she murdered her own son, decapitating him in the bathroom, then did the same to the family dog. This innocent little boy did not deserve to die in such a horrific way, and at the hands of his own mother. May little Carvel, rest in peace. Jenny M. Perry brutalized her six-year-old son to death. This child was placed in foster care right after his birth but returned to this mother when he was three years old. This child should have never went back to this woman. Perry was obviously unfit. It's sad that Child Protective Services made the devastating decision to send this child back. This innocent child was failed by the system and those who were supposed to love and care for him. Jenny Perry deserves to sit in prison for the rest of her life. May Damari rest in peace. That concludes this episode. Keep your eye out for the next volume, coming soon. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.
Want to help support the channel you love and get something in return? Simply purchase some Elizabeth's Chronicles merch. We have coffee mugs, t-shirts, sweatshirts, cozy blankets, beach towels, phone covers and more. Use the coupon code EC10OFF4U and get 10% off your order. The link to order is in the description area below this video. Thanks for helping Elizabeth's Chronicles continue to make the videos you love.